sweet friends and welcome back to the channel or if it's your first time here welcome especially I'm Sally and I'm so glad that you stopped by today's video is all about internal sunscreen but before you dive into this one if you have not seen last week's video on PUFAs uh, polyunsaturated fats go check that out because it is foundational to what we're going to be talking about today um, and really necessary to have an understanding of how to move forwards that being said, why does internal sunscreen matter? Why is this something we want to optimize? Well, sunlight on bare skin, skin that does not have sunscreen on it, is really going to be essential when it comes to both vitamin D synthesis in our own bodies and hormone health as a whole. Um, it has really profound impacts, which you can learn more about in last week's video. And also when we are putting sunscreen on top of our skin, it tends to have really nasty ingredients in it. Um, ingredients that in and of themselves can cause skin cancer and it's interesting because um, I don't remember the year in which it was noted the relationship between like sunburn or tanning and skin cancer um, there is some relationship obviously if we're not taking proper care of our skin that really is key so I don't think you can just go blindly like not have any sun protection and just be like totally fine there is a link there but what's interesting is people start sunscreen than ever before and yet the rates of skin cancer kept going up and up and up and up so a uh, fun little piece of information to be aware of but the bottom line is that oftentimes sunscreens do not have things in them that are great for our skin and it also um, kind of inhibits the natural processes that are really key to hormone health um, when it comes to our relationship with the sun. That being said, as you listen to the rest of this, please just be mindful um, that I'm not arguing for just being totally irresponsible when it comes to your sun exposure. Sun in the middle of the day is always going to be more potent than that earlier in the morning and later in the day. And if we are going to be out for hours on end, especially in that middle portion of the day, it's probably going to be wise to keep covered up for at least a good bit of that time. Um, or to find a sunscreen that you can use in those instances that is free of yucky ingredients, especially as you are learning how your body is adapting to the changes that you're making. This isn't an overnight kind of thing. There's a lot of buildup, especially when it comes to PUFAs in our diet. Um, and so it's just, it's a process. But the first point, first thing we can do to optimize our internal sunscreen is going to be to cut out processed PUFAs from our diet. Now, I'm not talking about things like salmon, wild caught salmon. I'm not talking about things like nuts. I think that nuts should be eaten responsibly um, and not just in excess because they are very high in those polyunsaturated fats. They also have vitamin E in them though, which is really key and something we'll talk about next um, when it comes to countering the oxidative stress that comes from PUFAs. However, we want to cut out anything like our refined seed oils, anything, you know, those might be in anything from fried foods, pretty much always in fried foods, to store-bought or restaurant salad dressings. Um, most of the time, if you're going out or if you're in the store and something has oil in it, even if it's something like hummus, which is supposed to have olive oil in it, it is going to have um, those processed poof up oils in them. So we want to cut these out, look for alternatives. I know that can be a really daunting process because it's it's in everything, but just the more whole foods we can eat, the simpler we can keep it, and the more we can cook our own foods, our own sauces, our own hummus, our own pesto, uh, the more we're easily we're going to be able to avoid these polyunsaturated fats in this form and the tastier it's going to be. But again, go watch last week's video for a full explanation of what's happening here. In short though, it is the polyunsaturated fats in our diet that are reacting with UV rays from the sun that are causing the inflammatory sunburn response. So this is the number one biggest thing we can do and it also comes down to our skincare. So if we are putting poly and saturated fats on our skin um, that is just a recipe for sunburn I have switched completely to on my face using beef tallow I wash it with a completely poofa free cleanser um, and I am finishing up the last bottle of lotion that I have but will be transitioning completely to um, a tallow or an olive oil or a coconut based moisturizer from here on out and I have heard from many people that in using tallow as their moisturizer it really has um, in and of itself done a ton to prevent sunburn and I learned this actually a long time ago about coconut oil is it does have properties that help to prevent sunburn burn so um great thing to look into and great thing to start using just trying it out for shorter increments of time and then building up from there now the second point has to do with vitamin e so i already talked a little bit about how vitamin e 
in nuts, also in salmon, helps to counteract the oxidative stress that comes from the polyunsaturated fats. Um, vitamin E is a really strong antioxidant, and I have a note here, I wanna make sure I say it right. Um, yeah, it is an essential antioxidant for the protection from PUFA oxidation, essentially. And so when we're eating foods that have both polyunsaturated fats and vitamin E in them in their whole forms. It's like this whole protective little package. It's pretty crazy how nature um, just in their natural form foods tend to work with our bodies, but then once we start refining them and messing with them, it gets screwy and it starts messing things up. That being said, something we can do, um, especially in cases when we are having some polyunsaturated fats more than we might like, um, or just to improve overall handling is to supplement with vitamin E. And I do have one linked below. Everything I'm gonna be talking about, I'm going to link below. When you are looking for a vitamin E supplement though, it is really, really key that you find one that is not in sunflower oil. You want it to be in MCT oil, multi-chain triglyceride. Um, that can come from different sources, but that's what you're going for if it comes from sunflower oil. All of the vitamin E in that supplement really is going to be going towards undoing um, the oxidation that is happening as a result of the PUFAs in that oil. So vitamin E is a huge one. Um, check out the supplement I have down below. And the next one is going to be astaxanthin. Um, astaxanthin is something I have used extensively. I'm not using it this year because I really wanted to see just alone the difference that the PUFAs, um, reducing PUFAs in my diet have, has made and it's made a huge difference. Um, but astaxanthin is a great, great, great asset. It is derived from an algae and it is an incredibly strong antioxidant. So not only is it great for skin health, um, but it is also phenomenal when it comes to joint health, when it comes to um, like exercise performance and recovery. It can be a huge asset for people who um, are, super are super active. In terms of sunburn though, again, consulting my notes really quick. So it's a super strong antioxidant and it prevents cell damage from active oxygen um, and it's an efficient blocker of UV rays. It also accelerates the healing of the skin after sun damage. So it's something that you can take retroactively, um, especially if you have a sunburn or if you're just you know out in the sun a lot, it's a great thing to have in your system to help support your body. That being said, it does take about two weeks to build up in your system before you're really going to notice a difference. So um, for instance, you might start taking it in April for a couple weeks at the end of April before May, if that's when you really find yourself increasing your time outside um, in less clothing um, and just take it throughout the summer and then generally you're gonna cycle off it throughout the winter months. Um, and the next thing, and this is the last thing that I wanna talk about is something that I have not actually used yet, but I've started to research a lot. Um, I have a cousin, a couple cousins, who they spend half the year sailing the world um, and they do not use sunscreen. They use astaxanthin and they use this other um, supplement. It is called Polypodium leucotomus. And this is actually derived from a fern. It's Yes, derived from a fern. It is an extract. Um, and I saw one description online that I feel like really did a good job of kind of summing it up. It acts as a scavenger to mop up free radicals and um, reactive oxygen species. And it has actually been known to improve symptoms of sunburn, eczema, and then other inflammatory skin reactions to the sun. So this is an incredibly potent and powerful supplement extract that you can add into your routine. It's something that I'm excited to try soon. Just understand I have the stamp of not having tried this myself, but of hear hearing incredible things. Just as with astaxanthin, it doesn't have to be taken before you're in the sun necessarily, although that's when you're gonna get any sunburn prevention effects, um, but it can be really powerful to take after sun exposure if you're sunburned to help heal your skin um, and prevent that DNA and that cell damage or help repair, excuse me, that cell damage. So kind of short, kind of sweet today, but that is it. Please comment below any questions, comments, or concerns or any sort of um, other tips you have when it comes to optimizing your internal sunscreen. So thanks for being here. Until next time, bye y'all.